Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and it is the summer. People are camping, people are trying to get a little bit of an escape, and what better dessert is there in the summer, other than apple pie, of course, than the classic campfire s'more. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Very simple, isn't it? It's just graham crackers, some chocolate bar, and some marshmallows. You can toast it over a fire, and it's just a delightful treat. It's a messy treat. But how about we bring the campground to the Instant Pot, and then we make a giant s'more that's stuffed, so it's like a cake. Guys, this recipe is beyond incredible. It is one of my favorite desserts I've ever made, and it was high time I've made a dessert again. It's been quite a while. We're talking, guys, a stuffed s'mores cake that is so irresistibly delectable that any single person who tries this out, whether it be a human or a bear, I guess I can pass for that these days, all of them, whoever tries it, is gonna want s'more. So let's bring the campfire to the Instant Pot and not have to worry about heating up our kitchens by turning on our ovens or even having to build a fire. We're gonna make the most amazing stuffed s'mores cake you've ever had. Maybe it's your first time. Well, it's not going to be your last once you try it. And guys, it's so easy. So let's get to it and begin. So the first step is going to be to mix together our dry ingredients. I want to take a decent sized mixing bowl here and add in one cup of crushed graham cracker crumbs. You can find that usually in the baking section of a supermarket. One cup of all-purpose flour. You don't have to sift it. And a quarter of a teaspoon each of salt, just regular salt, table salt's fine. And uh, baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. Add that in there. And we're gonna whisk that together until everything is fully combined. And this is why we wanna use a larger size mixing bowl because when you whisk up some flour, it has a tendency to wanna like go all over the place. So the deeper, the better. All right, and after about 30 or so seconds of whisking everything together, it's going to become a lovely graham cracker flour mixture. We're going to set this aside. Now let's go to a stand mixer with the bowl intact. And if you don't have a stand mixer, which I always prefer when I'm mixing a type of dough, uh, you can always use another mixing bowl here with a hand mixer. But, you know, this one is so much easier, I feel like, if you have one. I want to add in a whole stick or eight tablespoons of salted butter that's been softened. So leave it at room temperature for about an hour or two to get that way or if you don't have any patience and you forgot just zap it in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds just make sure it's not melted we want it to be nice and soft and out of the butter I want to add in a half a cup of a tightly packed light brown sugar try to use light brown instead of dark brown there's kind of very little difference between the flavors of the two I found but it does create an impact in terms of the coloring so use light it will look nicer at the end as well as a quarter of a cup of a white granulated sugar now let's fasten our paddle attachment, and if you have this fancy one that has like the side scraping edge, even better, but you don't need that. And now we're just gonna cream our butter and our sugar together on a low to a medium speed. We're gonna do this for about 30 seconds. All right, now that we're nice and creamed together, that looks great. I wanna add in one large egg, and I'm being a rebel and cracking it directly over. Some people would say don't do that in case some eggshell gets in, but I like to live dangerously on the edge, if you will. Of course, you can always crack it into a bowl first and dump it in, but why dirty another bowl? As well as one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and a tablespoon of pure maple syrup. Use the pure stuff. It's the best. And now we're gonna lower our stand mixer and we're going to continue to blend for about another 15 seconds on a four speed. Okay, and that is just how we want it. Now what I want to do is I want to add in all of my graham crocker flour mixture. And I just want to just kind of shake it in there. Try not to get it all over the place. <laughs> Excellent. And now I'm going to lower my stand mixer head again. And I want to start this on a low setting because if you just start to go at a fast speed with flour in there, it's going to go all over the place. It's going to be like, I love Lucy. We don't want that, even though I love Lucy. So um, I'm going to start it on a low speed just to let the dry ingredients get incorporated with the wet. Let them get nice and acquainted with each other. And once they begin to, then I can up my speed to a two. And I'm going to let this go until it forms kind of like a dough. You'll see it automatically just gets itself up from the side. It's perfect. And do this for about 30 seconds on a two speed. All right, and there we have it. Graham cracker dough. I'm gonna take a little rubber spatula here and just push it off the paddle and into the bowl. 
Okay, I'm gonna remove my paddle attachment here after scraping it off. If you have some remnants left, feel free to lick it off. I won't tell anyone. All right, guys, and this is the consistency we want. It should be nice and thick. So now I'm just gonna set this aside, and now we're gonna focus on assembling this puppy up. And it was thick. All right, guys, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take a seven by three spring form pan. These things are awesome. If you have one of these, I highly recommend it. It's the same thing I use for a cheesecake. And I wanna take some butter and I wanna grease the bottom of my pan. I also wanna get the sides, sides and the bottom. Butter, I feel like, is the best way to grease in this situation. Now I wanna lay in a parchment round. You know what, if they actually sell them this way, guys, in the perfect size, they fit lovely, and I wanna stick it on. If you don't have a parchment round, you can simply take some parchment paper and trace it along the bottom and take a knife and then just cut a circle. It'll be the perfect fit. You see that? You can get these seven inch ones online. I'll link it in the recipe. All right, now I also wanna butter the top of my parchment paper, nice and greasy, just like a weekend in Palm Springs. And this is the part where we get a little messy, so make sure you have clean hands here. Remember our graham cracker dough? Well, it's time to assemble. I wanna eyeball my dough here and take about, I'd say about uh, half of it or so. I just wanna press it into the bottom of my pan here. It forms together perfectly when you add it in, so it doesn't matter if you're doing it in like pieces. Okay, and once I have my bottom layer formed, I now wanna press it to the sides. I wanna make sure that my sides are also coated with the uh, amazing graham cracker dough we have here. And the reason we're doing this is because we wanna create a protective layer inside so it keeps all of the insides of our s'more cake within the uh, perimeter. Just put it to the side and push. And as you're working your way doing this, just you know, keep rotating and just making sure it's kind of even throughout. It's kind of like you're doing like a pottery wheel, like in Ghost, that scene with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. I just need some Unchained Melody right now, and like Patrick Swayze coming up behind me, and oh, that's okay, I'll take it. Alright guys, so once we're looking like this, where our sides are basically totally filled up, pretty much leaving just about, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch from the brim tops, we are good to go. Just like this, you see? That's how I want it to look. Lovely. Kind of like a deep dish pizza almost. And I still have some remaining in my mixing bowl, which we're going to use for the very top. But don't worry, the top should be a very thin layer. Let's move on. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to take some Hershey bars, guys. And I'm going to take the XL size, just because I feel like you get the most out of that. And we're going to use both of these in there. I'm going to start with one of these bad boys. Or I can call them bad girls. And wait, what? No golden ticket. Oh, whatever. All right, there's my lovely bar. I have uh, 16 of these little cute rectangles in there. I wanna just break it up now. And I just wanna lay my uh, Hershey's bars however you want in there. It doesn't really make a difference how you do it. Really, however you wish. Like, I feel like this is gonna be just fine. Just arrange it however. Whatever you do, try to just make it go into one layer. And, I mean, that looks great to me. Just like that is fine. Now I wanna take a seven and a half ounce jar of marshmallow fluff. And I want to take a spatula in there, and I want to now just basically paste my fluff over my Hershey bars. Give it a nice layer. You're probably not going to use the entire jar, but look, you can if you want. Get it all fluffy. You can never have too much marshmallow fluff in my opinion. Alright, and this is basically the whole entire jar of the fluff. You can really you know, use up to the entire jar if you want, it'll fit just fine. And now I want to add another Hershey bar. An XL size is great. Let me try this one now. Let me see. Man, they've really made these golden tickets hard to find. All right, and I'm just going to break this one up as well. Really do it however you want. Do it like this this time. And there we go. These two XL size bars are great. They're 4.4 ounces each. Uh, literally, they're like, it's the perfect size. And I even actually have one left over here. And, I, and now remember our remaining dough? Now it's time to put it on top. Let's just pat it in our hands like this. And then just press it on top. We wanna make sure it doesn't really come above the brim here. And then just kind of press it so it's nice and flat. It doesn't have to be super thick. Kind of, as you press it, it'll stretch itself out a bit. And there we go. Perfect. It's a very thin layer on top. If you have a little bit of the chocolate and some of the marshmallow peeking through, not a big deal. But I've used up my entire bowl of all of my fabulous, fabulous graham cracker dough. It's going to be amazing. All right, guys, we are ready to bake this baby. And now I want to cover the top of my pan with foil. Just give it a little bit of some extra room up there. Just kind of pull it around the sides. There we go. Perfect. 
And now we're gonna cook this. I wanna go to my Instant Pot and I wanna add in two cups of water. I wanna rest in the trivet. And I wanna place my springform pan inside of the Instant Pot. Of course, you could have also just lowered it in like that. that probably would have been easier, but <laughs> the hindsight's always 20-20. All right, now we're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna cook. I'm gonna secure my lid. Make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Now I'm gonna come down to the control panel and I'm gonna hit the pressure cook or the manual button depending on your model. And I wanna go guys for 40 minutes at high pressure. I adjust using the plus or minus buttons if I have a model that has that. If I have a knob model, I turn the knob to the adjusted time that I want. And now that we're done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we're gonna take our lid off. And now I'm going to carefully remove my pan with the trivet handles here and then let it rest on the wire rack and remove the foil. And lovely. And it's okay if that happens. It makes it look even more glorious as some of the marshmallow peeks through. Don't worry about that. We want to let this cool for about 15 minutes inside the pan, and then we're going to come back to it and we're going to get it out of there. Now, if you want to make them as lava cakes, which are going to be just as amazing and individually sized, we want to take four six ounce like Pyrex ramekins, if you can find these. They're very easy to find online and they run very, very cheap. Many stores also have them. You want four six ounce size ones. And to each one, I want to grease them with some butter to get the bottom and the sides of each one. See that? Nice and greased, slicked up. Here, you could also use like a non-stick cooking spray as well, but I like to use some butter. Now I'm gonna take the exact same dough mixture that I made before, no changes at all, it's gonna be the exact same measurements. And I'm gonna focus on just doing one of them to show you simply. So take some of the dough from the mixing bowl and then just basically press it down inside. And we want to basically make sure that we get the entire inside lines with our dough. And then I like to pat the dough in between my palms here so it gets kind of nice and flattened. And then just again lay it in almost like it's like a little pie. All right, and when we're looking like this, we're good. We're going to leave a little room for the top. Don't worry, we're going to finish it off by putting another layer. But now let's stuff this s'mores lava cake up. Again, Hershey bars. Just going to put like a double layer right there. Add in some fluff. It's a little sticky, this part. And then top it off with a more Hershey bar. That looks perfect, all right. And now I wanna seal the top. And now pat some more dough thin, and then we're just gonna tuck in our top here. And then try to get everything coated, and then perfect. There we go. There's one of our s'mores lava cakes ready to bake. Oh, and it feels so beautifully heavy. All right, so now let's rinse and repeat for the remaining three. The perfect amount of dough made, so just make sure while you're distributing the graham cracker dough in each of these little Pyrex ramekins that you're making sure it's evenly done so you don't run out. And voila, now let's put some foil wrap on top of each one. Just enough to cover it. Try to leave a little bit of wiggle room here on the top. Like, I don't want to press it down on top of the dough, per se. Just, you know, gently put it on so it's covering it. Okay, now we're going to pressure cook them. And just like for the s'mores cake, I'm going to add in the trivet and two cups of water. And I can put three of my ramekins on the bottom. And then I'll just rest my fourth one on the top, in the middle. So there you have it. I'm going to secure my lid. Make sure the valve is in the sealing position. And for lava cake style, it's gonna be a little bit less time because it's smaller amounts in each little pot there. We wanna do 25 minutes, guys, at high pressure for this. And now that we're done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so I'm gonna take my lid off. All right, and there they are. And I'm gonna just take them out now and I'm going to let them rest on the counter to cool. And this is where the handles and the trivet come in handy. Right, and there they are, and now I'm gonna just take the tin foil off the top, and oh, this is already looking amazing. All right, fabulous. And now if you want it to have that ooey gooey lava cake consistency, we wanna serve these immediately. If you wanna let them cool down and become room temperature, and become almost like a s'mores brownie cakey type thing, just leave them in there for a while, and just let them get to room temperature for a few hours, put them in an airtight container, it'll be lovely that way, but let's have it as lava cake. Now you can get in there with a spoon and look at this, guys. Ready for this? 
<laughs> now, some people like to flip up their thing upside down and dump it out like a lava cake, but what's the point? It's already in here. Just eat it out of the ramekin. Plus, you know, it might fall apart a little bit if you do that. Just leave it like this. Look at this. Oh, what's that? You want some ice cream on top? <laughs> okay. Twist my arm. And what? Some chocolate syrup? Psh, fine. Live wildly. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Oh, look at this. What a dessert. I mean, look at this. It's like the most heavenly, s'moresy dessert Sunday now with the ice cream on top. And the crust is to die for delish. Okay, and after 15 minutes of our cake cooling here, I'm going to remove the trivet, place it directly on the cutting board. And the center is going to be a bit soft. That's how we want it to be, guys. We want it to be like an ooey gooey s'more, all right? I'm going to take a paring knife here and I'm just going to cut along the edges. It should be very simple. You see how it just basically. It's exactly how we want it. Ah, uh, lovely. Poifix. And now I'm going to unlatch the spring form pan here. And look at this. Voila! Beautiful! That's why we butter and grease the sides up nice and good. You see that? Mmm. Scoop that out. And look at this, guys. This is exactly why we wanted to put all of our graham cracker crust on the sides to keep all of the chocolate and all the fluff inside. Again, who cares if some of it's peeking above the top? You know what? I'm gonna do a side camera angle for this shot because I feel like it's necessary. So it, this is gonna be so special, I have to rearrange my camera. All right, and here we go with a lovely piece of s'mores cake. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. It's ooey and gooey, just how I want it to be. We got that. Now we're gonna get this. I'm gonna cut under, don't forget there's parchment paper, so put the knife of the spatula in between the cake and the uh, <laughs> parchment paper. And look at this, look at that. Are you seeing this cake? Are you seeing this? My s'mores cake couldn't look more delicious or more ooey, gooey, perfect. Look at this, look at that delicious outer crust. Oh, just perfect. Now, if you want it to be super ooey gooey and s'moresy, you eat it right now. But if you want it to set and become like a chewy brownie, let it sit until it becomes cool down to room temperature, and then pop it in an airtight container and it can stay up to three days and it'll be like a brownie. And of course, you could always put it in the microwave and make it ooey and gooey again. It's totally up to you. Don't refrigerate it though. That'll make it too hard. Don't do that. All right, guys, and there it is, my s'mores cake. Here we go, first off. This is literally, it's messy, and it should be. It's a s'more. More, s'more should be messy. Let's get in there and just... Oh, look at this. This is gonna be ridiculously indulgent. Here we go. I have to take this away from my because I'm gonna eat this entire piece of cake and I'm trying to be good. But then why did you make this, Jeff, if you're trying to be good? You're gonna ask me? I know you're gonna ask me that, right? Well, because I had to do it for all of you. I know you guys want a s'mores recipe out there. I needed to do another dessert recipe, and I mean, it's summertime, people are camping. It's so good, you wanna have s'more of it. It's that, ugh, seriously, you guys, this is literally like a deep dish stuffed cookie. Does that make sense? Stuffed full of chocolate and marshmallow. Get some vanilla ice cream if you want. Put it right on top or right next to it. Sets it over the top even more. This thing is insanely rich. It's insanely indulgent. It's a wonderful treat. Look at this delicious cookie-like crust. It tastes like a sweet graham cracker cookie. Then of course, when you have all of the marshmallow and all of the chocolate melted within, I mean, it just becomes this unbelievable, decadent confection of amazingness. What a tasty treat this is, guys. A stuffed s'more cake in your Instant Pot, done so easily, and uh, we can make this in when you're camping, literally, or you can do it in your kitchen without turning the oven on. It's that amazing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy these videos, check out FreshRollerCooking.com. I have a ton of recipes there. I have an awesome cookbook, the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. It's an international bestseller. Check that out anywhere books are sold. It has 750 plus color photos, step-by-step -step for every recipe with a finished product for every single recipe as well. Gorgeous, you don't want to miss that. Facebook.com slash pressure luck cooking and like that page for any time new recipes comes out. Deals and item tips, humor, I have it all there. And of course, follow me on Instagram at pressure luck cooking, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, and of course, YouTube. Thanks again, guys. And well, what can I tell you? Please, sir, I want some more. What? You got that right.